Well, the background for this goes back a long time, like the history of the station. We've been working at the university on clams now for nearly 12 years. Dr. John Munro, when he first arrived here, was interested in clams and he collaborated with his wife and two people from the chemistry department looking at the induction of spawning, how to get clams to spawn, because one of the basic uh, things that you need to be able to do if you're going to grow something is to be able to spawn them on demand. So he started this work and then he left the university. And a small amount of work continued, mainly on the chemistry of spawning. And then uh, in 1984, ACIR uh, made a grant to the university which expanded the operation uh, in terms of the numbers of clams that we're producing. At the moment, in the tanks that you can see around you, we have four species, four different species of clams. For example, this one here. These are six-month-old uh, Hippopus, the horseshoe clam. Six months. These are now ready to go out in the field. We have in the tanks, you can see the little clusters of uh, Gigas, Gomosa, and the purple-colored one is uh, Tridac necrosia. So we have four species. We have different styles and designs of tanks because we've been interested in testing whether or not the design of the tank influences the growth of the animals concerned. So we start off by bringing one of our large brood clams, which we know is ripe, into the lab. We cause it to spawn and collect the eggs. We allow the eggs to settle or allow the eggs to hatch in a tank without flowing water for a period. The larvae hatch out of the eggs and then some of those larvae settle. Now our settlement rates vary between 1 and 5 percent, which is not a very high percentage of survival and settlement. But when you think that one clam spawning can produce 5 million eggs, that's still a substantial number of baby clams. We then keep them in the laboratory until they're around this size, keep them in these different tanks, and then we put them out in the field in cages which prevent large predators from eating them, because a small clam like that is an excellent meal for a fish. And octopus are also a problem. They like to uh, eat these animals too. So we protect them in cages with a mesh cover until they've achieved the size of the one that Dr. Baker showed you, uh, or slightly larger than that. Then we would remove them from those cages in the field situation and place them out in the grower phase. Uh, we're obviously interested in producing numbers of clams, as Dr. Baker has explained, both for potential commercial uh, clam production, but more importantly from the point of view of conservation, because all of these species of clams are in fact on the appendix to the CITES Convention. Now, CITES is a convention on uh, international trade in endangered species, and all of the clams have been listed on the appendix to that international agreement. So there is some concern and there is indeed some evidence that these uh, animals are going extinct in a number of locations. Hence we need to find a way to produce large numbers to restock roots and also of course for commercial and for subsistence production systems. Yeah. <laughs> 